This is Dr. Tuckman. I'm going to be talking about a lateral ulnar collateral ligament repair augmented with an internal brace. This is a 17-year-old patient who fell off of a horse. She suffered an open elbow dislocation with an anterior puncture wound. She was treated by another physician with an irrigation debridement and a closed reduction. Post-reduction x-rays demonstrate a concentric reduction. X-rays one week after the injury demonstrate loss of reduction with posterolateral rotatory instability. At that point, a patient was referred to me and I recommended an open exploration and lateral collateral ligament repair. With the patient in supine position, a coker approach was performed. Incision is made approximately a 30 to 45 degree angle uh, going distally posteriorly from the lateral epicondyle. The dissection is taken through the subcutaneous tissues down to the fascia. Most of this dissection can be performed with a self-retaining retractor. Incision is made in the fascia in line with the skin incision, extending distally and posteriorly. The fat stripe is easily identified. Just posterior to the fat stripe is an ancaneous muscle. Fascia is elevated a little bit posteriorly as well as anteriorly. The interval between the ancaneus and the ECU is developed. I think the coker approach is essential for instability surgery. The floor of the coker is the LCL. It runs in line with the coker, and appropriate identification of the LCL is absolutely critical for repairing instability. The lateral collateral ligament can be seen running from the lateral epicondyle, distally and posteriorly, to the crest. The tear can be seen more proximally at the insertion of the LCL on the epicondyle. Capsulotomy was performed. The extensors were elevated off the epicondyle more proximally. There was near complete avulsion of the extensors off the epicondyle. The Atsins can be seen holding the lateral collateral. Subperiosteal dissection of the ulna is performed in order to better visualize the insertion of the LCL. A number two fibroar suture is placed in a running locking configuration in the LCL. A drill hole is placed just posterior to the insertion of the LCL on the supinator crest. It's important to aim posteriorly so you don't skive the anterior cortex. I typically tap the hole, making passage of the anchor easier. I use an Arthrex 475 swivel lock preloaded with a fiber tape. The anchor is inserted and deployed. The center of rotation is determined visually at the center of the arc of the capitellum. Positioning of this hole can be aided using intraoperative fluoroscopy. Uh, if you're going to air, it's better to air a little bit anterior and proximal. The hole is tapped. The fiber tape and the number two fiber wire from the LCL are passed through the eyelet of the anchor. The anchor is placed with the elbow in 90 degrees of flexion, neutral rotation, and a mild valgus stress. The sutures are cut flush with the anchor. Elbow is placed through a full range of motion, demonstrating no instability. Intraoperative fluoroscopy demonstrates a concentric reduction of the joint. 
Fascia is closed with an ovicral suture. Skin is closed with an interrupted buried sub-Q 3O monocryl suture. Dermabond and steri strips. Patient is placed in a soft dressing postoperatively with no splint or brace, just a sling. My feeling is if the elbow is stable, it's stable. There's no need to splint or brace. A patient may remove the dressing at 48 hours post-op. At that point, they begin full active range of motion exercises. I usually see them at 10 days post-op. At that point, they begin formal therapy, continuing their active range of motion. At six weeks post-op, they add in passive range of motion and strengthening, and they're typically cleared for full activity at three months post-op. Thank you for watching this video. I encourage you to leave comments and let me know what you think.